It's a very special pleasure for me to be here. And it's also an honor to be here on this occasion of the 33rd inaugural lecture of the Babcock University. And this occasion is special to me because the inaugural lecturer, as you heard, is my friend and brother, Professor Lushi Oduyoye. Uh, Professor Oduyoye and I met in 1969, where we were classmates uh, from one, from from one at Igogi College, Yama. And of course, we've been friends since then. Uh, this is 52 years ago. Some of our classmates, some of our classmates are here. Tunde Fowler, I believe Mr. Uh, Taiwo Nutola, and I'm told Mr. Kune, who used to be our head boy, is also here somewhere here. And uh, I'm sure maybe one or two others who I can't immediately see. Our set, that's the 6975, as we call ourselves, is a very close-knit one. And we meet every second Sunday of every month, and we've been meeting for decades. Professor Obioye, uh, alas, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, you know, you have no further right of reply at this point. So I can do whatever I want. But I will spare him today. <laughs> But I'm also especially pleased today because uh, two of us uh, are probably the only two in our set that eventually became professors. Myself, Olu <laughs> Tonga, of course. Is he a professor also? Okay, of medicine. All right. So there are three of us, three of us. But I'm very pleased that at least uh, we went through the meal and uh, eventually became professors. The others went the way of money. <laughs> and they've all, of course, made tremendous success in all their endeavors. So like some of us uh, who are here, as uh, I've said uh, to one or two of the academics here, we are proud uh, academics. I'm also excited to be here at Babcock University, a university that has proved the point that with clarity of vision, excellent scholars and resources, a private university in Africa can compete with the rest of the world. And I must say that I'm especially impressed with the quality of graduates of this uh, university, their confidence, their sound learning, and especially their solid entrepreneurial skills. I've come across them in several different businesses, especially fintech and technology, and they have proved to be solid, disciplined, and innovative individuals. <laughs> this is a very young university, and clearly uh, the best is yet to come. And I must congratulate my dear friend and brother, Professor Dior, on this very relevant, very contemporary, and very scholarly lecture had the opportunity to browse through it, and there's a lot of material in there, which I, I believe is going to be very useful for us, especially those of us who are uh, policy makers in, on the economy, and especially for small businesses. There's no question at all, uh, going from uh, the submissions he has made, that the economic future of our country will depend on small businesses, medium and small businesses. And the obvious reason is because small businesses indisputably are the engine of growth of every economy. And I think that your statistics from different other countries of the world, they that are very eloquent. MSMEs also, of course, employ the largest number of people, which explains why you know, our, our government decided to do what, what is described as the MSME clinics. The MSME clinics. Now, this is... Uh, a commission which I have the uh, privilege of chairing. And what the clinics do is that every state, we go to every state of the federation, almost on a bi-monthly basis, and work with state governments to support small businesses all across uh, Nigeria. 
The MSME clinics were designed to bring regulatory agencies whose work affects the business enterprises of MSME. So what we do is that we'll go to the states and we'll go with uh, the regulatory agencies. Mr. Fowler, of course, has been on several of those trips while he was chairman of the FIS. We go with NAFDAQ, uh, with SOM, all the major regulatory agencies. The idea is to bring those regulatory agencies to the various states so that the MSMEs can meet with them and discuss their various problems. What has happened in some states, and at the moment I think we have about 12 states, that have one-stop centers in their states. Now these one-stop centers are places where you can meet with all the regulatory agencies. They have offices so that it's easy for them to access NAFDAQ, to access SON and any of these other places, but only 12. Our country is a very big country, very large country. And one of, the very, one of the major problems that we have is in trying to use one, for instance, SMEDA, one enterprise, one government agency to satisfy several different uh, uh, MSMEs. And they run into millions. What we try to encourage in the states, the situation where the states themselves develop their own versions of Smedas, so that states themselves are able to sponsor businesses, able to support businesses. In some of the states, we've, we've, we've set up what are called um, uh, uh, resource, uh, resource centers, where you build uh, a cluster. For example, we have clusters of farming in Bengal State, where we build a cluster for those who do farming and, uh, and processing. And so, Farmers who cannot afford equipment come together and use the equipment there. We have one that is about to be launched in the Navy for uh, shoemakers. So they put a cluster there with equipment that can be used by the shoemakers there. Incidentally, in the Navy, there is an export of close to a million shoes, pairs of shoes, every month coming out of that. So it's a very important cluster for, and of course there are all small businesses who cluster there. We also have one in Oyo State, you know, and there are a few of these clusters. So the whole idea is to set up some of these uh, services in different states. But the states must accompany the federal government in doing this, because as I've said, it's a big country, this is a federation. In many of the countries uh, that you've cited, especially the U.S., state support is very important for small businesses. And when you look at some of the sums of money, you know, you'll see that uh, a million, two million here and there is the sort of thing that, that uh, some states at least uh, should be able to afford. But I wanted to also make the point that one of the things that we did with, the, with uh, MSMEs during the COVID, uh, right after COVID, is what is called this, the MSME Survival Fund. The MSME Survival Fund gave uh, almost a million businesses uh, support after COVID. We paid three months' salaries for several of those MSMEs, especially at uh, private schools, private uh, uh, primary schools, private secondary schools. We paid for teachers and, we, and also for uh, several small transport owners. So the MSME survival fund, and I think that this, some of the uh, statistics would be useful, especially you know, as you further research uh, your work, there's so much that was done. But as I keep saying, it's a large country. It's a very big country. In order to deal with all of those issues and to be able to support small businesses in a way that they ought to be supported, a lot more money is needed. And just one final point on that. Uh, the AFDB, the uh, African Development Bank, has agreed to uh, support the government with 500 million US dollars for small businesses in technology in particular. And so we think that this is something that will be very helpful indeed. And in addition to a 75 billion fund which the federal government has set up also for young people and small businesses. We must keep working on small businesses because that certainly is the future of our country, no question at all. And those businesses you know, uh, bring hope, they bring jobs, they bring opportunities. And I, and I very strongly believe that this is where the, the direction we ought to be headed. As I close, let me also commend the Seventh-day Adventist Church for the investments that they have made in education. 
I think that this is very commendable indeed. And this is the direction that uh, several uh, religious organizations must follow. The real work of uh, the real work of ministry is the work of ministering to the people, especially those who cannot afford uh, to do many of those things themselves. The work that ministries did is why uh, the likes of Professor Ujua and I are able to be here because our, our college was one that was uh, was founded by two Christian ministries, the Christian missions, the Methodist and Anglican mission, and they gave education, quality education, very very cheap, so that we were able to afford it, and several of us were able to go to school and. Uh, be the people that we are today. So I believe that it's very important that religious organizations see this as primary in all of the tasks and all of the things that, uh, that they choose to do. So I'd like to commend uh, the church for this. And again, to congratulate uh, my dear brother and friend, uh, Professor Jehu Jehu, on this very auspicious occasion, and also to wish him a very happy birthday. But I must say before I say that he has already made the point very clearly that because he and I, of course, are Ijibu. Um, <laughs> so he made the point very clearly that uh, he should not expect. Uh, God bless you. Happy birthday.